So the only way that you can do this without going crazy is to make a one-dimensional model of these atoms. Okay? And so we're going to assume that there's one state per n. This is gross. I mean, what's amazing is that this works at all. Okay, so we're, we're going to make flow gay levels, and we're going to start sort of in the middle with n equals 75. So here's n equals 75. It's a, at halfway through the chirp, it's roughly degenerate with n equals 76 minus a photon. So here's 76 minus a photon. And 77 minus two photons. So these are the Floquet energies of these three states uh, given right here. Okay, so I've drawn, the, the <coughs> drawn them as a function of the microwave frequency in gigahertz. And <coughs> I've, I've drawn them assuming there's no microwave field. So these levels cross. Okay. However, if I have a small electric field, these crossings become anti-crossings <coughs> or avoided crossings. And if I started out with atoms in n equals 75 and I chirped it from, 14 to, from 17 to 14 gigahertz, say from here to here, I could in fact go through both of these avoided crossings and wind up in n equals 14. I would just do two single photon adiabatic rapid passages. <coughs> On the other hand, I could in fact start in n equals 75 at 14 gigahertz chirp the field the other way and go through this two photon avoided crossing and wind up in n equals 17. I mean, so this is backwards, right? <laughs> uh, so this is in fact similar to Bergman's counterintuitive pulse sequence and experiments like this were done by Murdom et al. And of course, anything having to do with manipulating atoms with, by multi-photon processes was always done first by Eberle. Okay. So let's go on then and <coughs> look at all the levels from 68 up to 84. So, all right, so there, here's n equals 75 again, and <coughs> as I go up and in, I get these levels over here, and down and in are the ones like this. At the top of this graph, there's a sequence of avoided cross or anti crossings, crossings, which are the single photon resonances. Here's the two photon resonance we just looked at a minute ago. This is a three photon, four photon, five photon. Okay. But so you, you get the idea. You can get all of these resonances that correspond to changing n by one, two, three, four, and so on. Okay, so this is no microwave field. If you put on a field of a tenth of a volt per centimeter, <coughs> all of those single photon avoided crossings have become just one enormous <coughs> continuous level. And so this actually corresponds to the classical picture that I gave you. The, the, the avoided crossings completely overlap, and <clears throat> if I put the atoms as point A in n equals 71 to start with, chirp the frequency from 13, sorry, from 19 to 13, I go over to B and I wind up in n equal 82. The interesting thing is that <clears throat> the atom, the electron is phase locked to this motion to the oscillating field the whole time. Actually, we have <coughs> verified that. Okay. Now <clears throat> Okay. But chirping it the wrong way works too. So I can in fact transfer population from 78 to 72 with a chirp from high to low frequency. <coughs> so as I go from here to here, the Kepler frequency is increasing, but the microwave frequency is in the other, in the other direction. So here is n equals 78, here is n equals 72. You can see that this takes a higher field than the, than the going in their sort of right or intuitive direction, but it still happens. And <clears throat> the reason why it happens is, the, is basically the two photon explanation I gave you earlier. <clears throat> Namely, when you turn the field up to eight tenths of a volt per centimeter, the, all of the, so the one photon, two photon, three photon, four photon curves, now are all completely smooth curves. And only below that do you now start to see interactions with <clears throat> for larger delta n transitions. So if I start out in n equals 77 here at 19 gigahertz and chirp it down to 13 gigahertz, I pass through all of these avoided crossings diabatically, right? You can't see anything. And I go through this one adiabatically and then come out the other side. Okay. So <clears throat> this is the, so what's sometimes called the counter. <coughs> It's equivalent to uh, Bergman's counterintuitive pulse sequence. The other interesting thing is I don't need this whole chirp, right? I went through all of this stuff diabatically. 
All I really need to do is to go from about here to here. In principle, we should be able to do this with 50 megahertz. Well, we couldn't do that, but actually, <coughs> we could transfer atoms from n equals 72 to 83 with a chirp of only 600 megahertz, so, which is a lot easier than 6 gigahertz. Okay, so, <coughs> so of course, what we've done is go through this 10 photon avoided crossing once rather than through this whole string of 1 photon avoided crossings. Okay. So the point is, it's fairly easy to move atoms around by using these <coughs> microwave manipulations. Okay, so I, I would like to go back to our original foray into relatively strong microwave fields was microwave ionization. So in the first experiment, while we were deliriously happy to have figured out why we had ionization fields of 1 over 3 under the fifth, we missed a few interesting things due to two, th two reasons. One is <coughs> we were detecting ions. Uh, and the second is that we had small stray fields. And by small, I mean in excess of, say, 50 millivolts per centimeter. We, we had atoms passing through a microwave cavity a millimeter above the septum in a vacuum system that has a diffusion pump oil <coughs> plus fingerprints. So, I mean, we knew that there would be stray fields, but we were putting on microwave fields of hundreds of volts per centimeter. Who in the world would think that 50 millivolts is going to make any difference? Uh, <coughs> okay, anyway, so we, have, we being Alexander, and Alexander has a poster on this subject, uh, revisited microwave ionization of sodium, and here are four different states. Uh, so let's just look at one of them, <coughs> 24F. So if you looked at the, the way we measured the ionization probability earlier, you would see something that went up like this as a function of the microwave field. But basically, all of the atoms disappear from the <coughs> initial state and show up in the final state. That's detecting the ions from microwave ionization. If you get the stray fields down below 50 millivolts, <clears throat> something we, were, we, we thought we would never have to do, you find if you use electron detection so that you can tell the difference between um, an ion and an ion with an electron still attached to it in a very high lying state, you find that <clears throat> roughly 10% oh, of the population is left in these states with, <clears throat> with n greater than 250. That is within one microwave photon of the limit. I mean, they're, they're in states that should have ionized law. I mean, it fields orders of magnitude less than this. So this goes away with 50 millivolts per centimeter. It takes 300 millivolts to produce the ionization. Okay, so <coughs> curiously, this is <coughs> not peculiar to microwave ionization. Uh, several multi-photon experiments have pre observed precisely the same thing. In particular, a recent one at the Max Born Institute by Uli Eichmann and his collaborators found that <clears throat> when they ionized helium with 800 nanometer gigavolt per centimeter pulses, they basically wound up with 10% of the atoms left in excited states. Okay. I mean, they, th th this field is enough almost to ionize the ground state, but they, they found atoms from <clears throat> basically from n equal 5 or 6 all the way up to the limit. Okay. So <clears throat> in summary, I guess the thoughts I'd like to leave you with. Um, so microwaves actually provide interesting insights into strong, strong field physics, which is usually laser physics. Uh, you can, in fact, think about these fields as <coughs> driving Landau-Zener transitions on one or multiple cycles, or you can think of them as resonant photon absorption. And finally, you can use microwaves to manipulate these states pretty easily. Okay, and with that, thank you for your attention. <coughs>